Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to another episode of Read OMC. Today we are continuing with our chapter book, The Ranger's Apprentice series, and we are on chapter four. Will? Will who? Martin asked in exasperation, flicking through the sheets of paper with the candidate's details written on them. He had only been this Baron Secretary for five years, and so knew nothing of Will's history. He realized now that there was no family name on the boy's papers, and assuming he had let this mistake slip past, he was annoyed at himself. What's your family name, boy? He asked severely. Will looked at him, hesitating, hating this moment. I... I don't have... he began, but mercifully the Baron interceded. Will is a special case, Martin he said quietly, his look telling the secretary to let the matter go. He turned back to Will, smiling encouragement. What school did you wish to apply for, Will? he asked. Battle school, please, my lord, Will replied, trying to sound confident in his choice. The baron allowed a frown to crease his forehead, and Will felt his hopes sinking. Battle school, Will? You don't think you're a little on the small side? the baron asked gently. Will bit his lip. He had all but convinced himself that if he wanted this badly enough, if he believed in himself strongly enough, he would be accepted, in spite of his obvious shortcomings. I haven't had my growing spurt yet, sir, he said desperately. Everybody says that. The Baron rubbed his bearded chin with thumb and forefinger as he considered the boy before him. He glanced to his battle master. Rodney, he said. The tall knight stepped forward, studied Will for a moment or two, then slowly shook his head. I'm afraid he's too small, my lord, he said. Will felt a cold hand clutch his heart. I'm stronger than I look, sir, he said, but the battle master was unswayed by the plea. He glanced at the baron, obviously not enjoying the situation, and shook his head. Any second choice, Will, the baron asked. His voice was gentle, even concerned. Will hesitated for a long moment. He had never considered any other selection. Horse school, sir? he asked finally. Horse school trained and cared for the mighty battle horses that the castle's knights rode. It was at least a link to battle school, Will thought. But Ulf, the ho horse master, was shaking his head already even before the baron asked his opinion. I need apprentices, my lord, he said, but this one's too small. He'd never control one of my battle horses. They'd stomp him into the ground as soon as look at him. Will could only see the Baron through a watery blur now. He fought desperately to keep the tears from sliding down his cheeks. That would be the ultimate humiliation, to be rejected from battle school and then to break down and cry like a baby in front of the Baron, all the craftmasters, and his wardmates. What skills do you have, Will? The Baron was asking him. Will racked his brain. He wasn't good at lessons and languages as Alice was. He couldn't form neat, perfect letters the way George did nor did he have Jenny's interest in cooking, and he certainly didn't have Horace's muscles and strength. I'm a good climber, sir, he said finally, seeing that the Baron was waiting for him to say something. It was a mistake, he realized instantly. Chubb, the cook, glared at him angrily. He can climb, all right. I remember when he climbed up a drain pipe into my kitchen and stole a tray of sweet cakes that were cooling on the windowsill. Jill, Will's draw dropped with the unfairness of it all, that had been two years ago. He was a child then, and it was a mere childish prank, he wanted to say. But now, the scribe master was talking too. And just this last spring, he climbed up to our third floor study and turned two rabbits loose during one of our legal debates. Most disruptive, absolutely. Rabbits, you say, scribe master, said the baron, and Nigel nodded emphatically. A male and a female rabbit, my lord, if you take my meaning, he replied. Most disruptive indeed. Unseen by Will, the very serious Lady Pauline put one elegant hand in front of her mouth. She might have been concealing a yawn. But when she removed the hand, the corners of her mouth were slightly up-tilted still. Well, yes, said the Baron. We all know how rabbits are. And as I said, my lord, it was spring, Nigel went on, in case the Baron missed the point. Lady Pauline gave vent to an unladylike cough. <coughs> The Baron looked in her direction in some surprise. I think we get the picture, scribe master, he said, and then returned his gaze to the desperate figure who stood in front of him. Will kept his chin up and stared straight ahead. The Baron felt for the young lad in that moment. 
He could see the tears welling up in those lively brown eyes, held back only by an infinite determination. Willpower, he thought abstractedly, recognizing the play on the Bill's name, the boy's name. He didn't enjoy putting the boy through all this, but it had to be done. He sighed inwardly. Is there any one of you who could use this boy? He said. Despite himself, Will allowed his head to turn and gaze pleadingly at the line of craftmasters, praying that one of them would relent and accept him. One by one, silently, they shook their heads. Surprisingly, it was the ranger who broke the awful silence in the room. There is something you should know about this boy, my lord, he said. Will had never heard Halt speak before. His voice was deep and soft-spoken, with the slightest burr of a Hibernian accent still noticeable. He stepped forward now and handed the Baron a sheet of paper folded double. Errol unfolded it, studied the words written there, and frowned. You're sure of this, Halt? he said. Indeed, my lord. The Baron carefully refolded the paper and placed it on his desk. He drummed his fingers thoughtfully on the desktop, then said, I'll have to think on this overnight. Halt nodded and stepped back, seeming to fade into the background as he did so. Will stared anxiously at him, wondering what information the mysterious figure had passed on to the Baron. Like most people, Will had grown up believing that rangers were people who were best avoided. They were a secretive, arcane group, shrouded in mystery and uncertainty, and that uncertainty led to fear. Will didn't like the thought that Halt knew something about him, something that he felt was important enough to bring to the Baron's attention today of all days. The sheet of paper lay there, tantalizingly close yet impossibly far away. He realized that there was movement around him and the Baron was speaking to the other people in the room. Congratulations to those who were selected here today. It's a big day for you all, so you're free to have the rest of the day off and enjoy yourselves. The kitchens will provide a banquet for you in your quarters, and for the rest of the day you have free run of the castle and the village. Tomorrow you report to your new craftmasters first thing in the morning. And if you'll take a tip from me, you'll make sure you're on time. He smiled at the other four, then addressed Will with a hint of sympathy in his voice. Will, I'll let you know tomorrow what I've decided about you. He turned to Martin and gestured for him to show the new apprentices out. Thank you, everyone, he said, and left the room through the door behind his desk. The craftmasters followed his lead, then Martin ushered the former wards to the door. They chattered together excitedly, relieved and delighted that they had been selected by the craftmasters of their choice. Will hung back behind the others, hesitating as he passed the desk where that sheet of paper still lay. He stared at it for a moment, as if somehow he could see through to the words written on the reverse side. Then he felt that same sensation that he had felt earlier, that someone was watching him. He looked up and found himself staring into the dark eyes of the ranger, who remained behind the baron's high-backed chair, almost invisible in that strange cloak of his. Will shuddered in a sudden frisson of fear and hurried out of the room. All right, my loves, that's the end of our chapter for today. I love you very much, and I will see you tomorrow.